Hey my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number uh, Tableau Experts. And in this week's video, I wanna cover how can you take a single uh, dimension in Tableau and split it out across multiple columns so you don't just end up with some massive worksheet with a you know huge scroll bar. Okay, um, so let me show you kind of the age old problem that I'm talking about, right? So let's say I've got something where I'm comparing the per capita income of US states to one another, right? So, you know, uh, I'm probably gonna end up with a big scroll bar like this, got all 50 states listed out. It's not gonna fit super well on a dashboard, right? Um, it's okay to have scroll bars sometimes, but it's really ideal to avoid them when possible just because your users can just be a lot less likely to go see that data at the bottom of your sheet, right? So I want to show you a couple alternatives, right? So one option would be to do something like uh, bar charts like this, where we've got um, just, you know, 10 states per column, and then it's split out across five columns. Um, or Another kind of variety of that would be something like a highlight table where I've got, you know, Massachusetts is number one in the top left, Mississippi is number 50 in the bottom right, and it just kind of works its way down, you know, column by column to get to that 50. So uh, in this week's video, that's what we're going to be covering. Um, so if that seems cool to you, jump right in. Um, I'll drop a link to the workbook that I'm working on here in the description. So if you want to check it out, you can. It's actually an extremely basic data source. Uh, it's just two columns. There's a column called state and then a column called per capita income. Okay. Um, so while I'm getting my workbook pulled up to do this, just special shout out to Andy Kriebel. Um, this was a concept I picked up in one of his YouTube videos a few months ago. So um, go ahead and give him a, a look if you think this is cool because he does cool stuff like this all the time. All right, so uh, where to start, right? So let me go ahead and uh, start by coming up with, let me think about actually how exactly I wanna do this. I'm gonna start by creating a calculated field um, that will put my, put my states into those five columns, right? So I'll call this rank by PCI fifths, okay? And the way this would look is I would say if the rank by sum of per capita income is less than or equal to 10 than one. So if your value is between one and 10, you're part of the first column, okay? Next up, I would say else if rank is less than or equal to 20, then you're in column two. So we're just gonna go on like this and create five columns, three, four, five. So let me just update the logic here, so 30, 40, 50, three, four, five. Um, oh, and then this should just say, do, 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 do. let's see, where is it at? Oh, I'm missing a closing parenthesis on every single one of these. Awesome. Let me go update that. <laughs> oh, you know, you try and go fast for these videos so you all aren't just like sitting around watching me do nothing, but then at the same time you go too fast, mess stuff up. Um, okay, so this is going to end up being like a column label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this field and instead of having it be like some sort of weird continuous field, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to rank by PCI fifths, hit the drop down this field in the data pane and say convert to discrete. Um, so what that does is it takes it from a number which would be plotted against an axis and then it converts it into a label. Okay. Um, so actually something I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to throw state on detail. So I should get, <laughs> I built a map, I forgot it was gonna do that. Let me take latitude and longitude off my column shelves and row shelves. So it's just got 50 different squares listed out for the 50 states. Um, something I'm gonna do, cause it's gonna be nice for us visually. I've got a calc in here that converts the state name to the abbreviation. I've actually got a whole nother video on that. I'll drop the description to that um, below so you can check it out. But I'm gonna put state abbreviation on detail as well, just so that's handy for later. So check this out, if I put rank by PCI fifths on the column shelf, <laughs> yeah, currently it, it, it just says, oh, they're all part of column one. No, they're not, Tableau, you crazy head, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the drop down. Um, so rank by PCI fifths, that's a table calc. So I'm gonna hit the drop down and say edit table calculation. And I need to make sure it's actually ranking all the states against each other, one through 50. Um, so one way I can do that is with specific dimensions. If you haven't used that a lot before, <laughs> link to a blog post in the description below where we can walk you through what specific dimensions are and what these are doing. Basically, I'm just telling Tableau by selecting all of these, um, by selecting both the state values is I'm just saying, rank the states one through 50. I want, I want all of the states ranked against one another. I don't want it to restart at all. 
So they're not in any super particular order at this point, other than you can tell who's in the top 10, who's 11 through 20, and so on. But it's kind of starting to shake out. Okay, so next up, now we need to create the columns, right? Because I think Massachusetts is actually supposed to be in the top left, but it's just going alphabetically, Colorado through Washington. So next up, we're gonna create another calculated field, and this one will be called uh, rank by PCI per capita income, one through 10. So in a lot of ways, this will be similar to the calculation that we just wrote uh, with a little bit of a twist to it. So I'll say if the rank by sum of per capita income, oh man, I already messed it up, here we go. Okay, if the rank by sum of per capita income is less than or equal to 10, then, oh, here we go, then just give me the rank based on the sum of the per capita income. Okay, so let me make sure that's working, it is, cool. All right, so then the next line is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract 10 off of the next batch of values, okay? Meaning, if else if the rank is less than or equal to 20, so if it's an 11 through 20, then give me the rank of my sum of per capita income minus 10. So what was formerly 11 will now be one to make sure it shows up in the first row. And maybe I should even kind of put that here to clarify that this is gonna be my rows field. Okay. So now let's do this for the next batch as well. If it's less than or equal to 30, then we're gonna subtract 20. So 21 becomes one, right? Um, I don't know how much this is making sense yet. I think it will more so once you see it visually. So if you're like, what in the heck is going on right now? That's okay. Um, it might take a couple walkthroughs or run-throughs to see this. It kind of took me a couple times going through it to feel like it really solidified for me. So that's rank one through 10, that's my rows field. And let me just rename the other one so we can very clearly know that that's our columns field. Okay, so same deal here. I'm gonna convert this to discrete so it just gives me nice labels. And I'm gonna throw this on the row shelf. Also with this calculation, now I need to select edit table calculation. I need to make sure it's specific dimension, state, state. Okay, and the visual is not very impressive yet, but the good news is that we are in business, right? So Massachusetts is number one and Mississippi is number 50. Um, I'm not seeing those numbers yet, and so we can get that, uh, but that's good. So let's create that. Let's create that overall rank, um, overall rank by PCI. So this is gonna be the simplest calculation by far. This will just be, um, give us the rank by sum of uh, per capita income. So we can throw that on, let's currently put it on tooltip, although we'll probably move it around. Once again, edit the table calc, make sure it's set to both those fields. So now as I hover over, um, so Massachusetts shows as number one, Mississippi should show as, show as number 50, and then everywhere, everybody else is just sort of in between. Okay, so how do we make the, let's start with the bars specifically. So how do we make bars like this, okay? Um, so let me flip back over here, okay? And so for this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab per capita income and throw this on the column shelf, okay? So now it's giving me, uh, you know, the length of the bars represents the per capita income value. So Massachusetts tops the list at $86,000 and Mississippi is the bottom of the list at 42,000, okay? So then how do we get the nice labels and, and kind of all that stuff overlaid? Um, so a couple components to this. Uh, so I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna create a dual axis chart so I can do multiple labels, right? You'll notice that I've got labels at the beginning of the bar and the end of the bar. Um, I'll drop a link to, in the description, I keep saying that, uh, to a video we did specifically on that concept, but we'll walk through the basics again here. So what I'm gonna do, another copy of per capita income goes to my column shell. It's gonna look a little bit hectic at first, but just bear with me. So in doing that, now I have two different sections for per capita income down here in my marks card and I can um, do what I want with the labels, like I can make unique labels for both bars. So for example, for this first bar, what I might do is say, okay, I'm gonna move my rank field and my state abbreviation to label, and I want the alignment of the label to be left, okay? So notice that it's kind of putting those labels there. I'm gonna hit the little ellipses here so I can get them on the same line. So it would say like one period MA for Massachusetts. Okay, now I can go to the second section, the second per capita income in my marks card, 
And then this one, let's say I just wanna put the per capita income as a label at the end of the bar. Okay, so I've got the two bars. How do I get them overlaid? Um, a lot of places that you can go to do this. I'll just go to the second uh, per capita income pill on my column shelf and select dual axis. Looks pretty horrific at first, but we're gonna amend that. So I'm gonna change my mark types to be bars for both of these. Uh, if you wanna mix up the colors here at all, you can. So let me go ahead and set those to, oh God, I thought that was gonna be a lot better color blue. Uh, my bad. <laughs> mean to burn your retinas there. All right, um, so they're not synced up right now, so they're kind of doing something funky. So I'm gonna right click on just one of those axes and say synchronize axis. And now they're nice and lined up. So this looks pretty busy, um, kind of a lot going on, but we're gonna do some formatting and, and hopefully get this to a better place. Uh, okay, so first of all, I'm gonna get rid of all the kind of side labels and the rankings and just all the categorization stuff we've done. So both of those rank fields on the column shelf, I can right click and deselect show header on those fields. Gives us a little more breathing room. Um, I don't really need the axes anymore, right? Cause I've got the labels for the bars. So I could probably just deselect show header on one of those and both of them should go away cause they're linked. Um, I don't really like the grid lines in the background. I find that distracting. So I'm gonna right click in the background of my worksheet somewhere in the white space, select format and then go to columns and set grid lines to none. Okay, so we're in pretty good shape here, right? So we'll call this uh, per capita income by state, and I'm just gonna call this bars. So let me just do it once over here, but I think we're in, in really good shape. Um, this is kind of exactly the way I want this to look. So something that I will say about this is that, uh, this is kind of a curated example, surprise, surprise, made it just the way I wanted to for this video. Um, this works really well because the largest and the smallest values aren't that different, right? It's only about a 2x difference between number 50 and number one. Um, so if you have a, a much bigger difference, I think that specifically is where something like a highlight table could be helpful because then you're not dealing with any sort of like visual distortion, okay? Um, or like some tiny bar and the labels are overlapping and it looks horrible. Okay. So just thought of this last thing I want to do here on this sheet, and then we'll do the highlight table, is what if I want my user just to be able to easily highlight a state, right? Because this is very cool, but finding a specific state is a little bit complicated in this chart. So what I'm going to do is hit the drop down on my state pill. Um, it could be from either section of the Mars card, doesn't matter. And I'm just going to say show highlighter. I'll just move that over to the left so it's not cramming my bars. And then what I could do here is, is literally just search any state, right? So I could say, oh, how is California doing? Okay, so California is 12th by per capita income. How's Florida doing? Ooh, Florida's 41th, right? Um, how's Utah doing? I just saw Utah at seven over there. So there you go. You can make it easy for your user to be able to find the value that they're interested in. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. Um, income by state, but this will be a highlight table variety. So the cool part is a lot of our kind of groundwork is done already, but uh, a little bit of a different visual here. So both state and state abbreviation will go on detail. I get to reuse my same field. So the one that goes on the row shelf, the one that goes on the column shelf, my overall rank, that'll go on, let's put on detail for now. So once again, I think all of these, I need to set the specific dimensions. So that part's a little bit annoying to have to redo that, but such is life. We have to do things we don't like. Okay, last one. Cool. So how do I get this uh, to be a highlight table? So I'm going to show you sort of an age-old trick of mine picked up in a Tableau training long, long time ago, um, which is that we're going to turn these squares actually into bars that are all the same size. And speaking of Tableau training, uh, if you check out this info button in the upper left corner here, uh, we've got Tableau classes that we're running all the time, generally multiple per month, everything from the basics of Tableau to advanced stuff like this, beginner calculations, advanced calculations, Tableau prep, the whole thing. So we would love to have you join us for one of those. You can see the descriptions and upcoming uh, dates up there in the corner. All right, so I'm gonna create a calculated field. This is gonna be, the, the name of the calculation is one. The formula is max of one, okay? This is just gonna be a placeholder which keeps all of my bars the same size because I'm gonna trick out a highlight table here. So I'm gonna change my mark type to bar. At first there's no measure on you know length or anything, so it doesn't really do anything. But then I'm gonna drop one on size in the marks card and I'm gonna do a little bit of a maneuvering around here. So I'm gonna set the size of my bars to be bigger so that they're wider. 
Now I technically have all these kind of interlocking bars. I'm gonna hit the drop down on the color tab in the marks card, set the border to kind of a light gray. And now this is actually much easier than the bar chart in my opinion. Um, it's very easy to just put whatever I want on the labels. So I'm gonna put rank on label. I'm gonna put state abbreviation on label. I'm gonna put the uh, per capita income on label. And now I can just sort of soup this up however I want. Go to label, hit the little ellipses here after text. So maybe I'll do the rank first with a period, uh, followed by the state abbreviation. Uh, maybe the per capita income is gonna go down below that and be bolded. And let me just set my alignment to centered. Okay. And then here, now I could do um, a per capita income. I could put that field on color. I don't know why it chooses this like robin's egg blue. What are you doing, Tableau, you crazy person? Um, I'll just kind of soup it out. Maybe I'll just pick the same blue we were using in the previous sheet, you know, something like that. So similar again, I could uh, deselect show header from my columns and rows fields. If I want to show my highlighter again, I could do that. And now my user could sort of easily find, okay, what state is it that they're looking for, right? So yeah, once again, just sort of a, a cool way of being able to take a single dimension and instead of having just one really long column, for example, being able to split it out across multiple columns. Um, so kind of one last thought on this front, you know, this example works super nicely because there's 50 states. So we get, you know, five by 10 and it's kind of a nice grid. Um, so a common question I would get is, you know, could you do this if there's more than 50 values or like what if it's a dynamic amount of values? So we're probably not gonna go all the way into that right now, but in theory, you could. Um, what, how you could categorize it, like let's say you're doing you know, your products or even countries of the world, right? So you could hard code it if it's gonna be a largely set number, but something else that you might consider doing is um, doing something based on like the percentile or the rank percentile. So you could always say, oh, if something's in the top or in the, you know, the 90th percentile on up, that's gonna be column one. If it's in the 80th percentile on up, that's gonna be column two. So you're welcome to explore that. Maybe that would be of interest if that's a particular interest and challenge to you. So thank you so much for diving into this deep dive topic in Tableau. Uh, we really appreciate it. We drop new videos like this every week. So we would love to have you back here next week for whatever comes next. So uh, thank you so much. We appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon.